Hey everybody, uh, welcome. Um, I'm back and I went to the classroom and got some more books. So I, you will see me in different outfits now because I'm not gonna be at Barnes & Noble reading <laughs> all the books all at once. So um, I hope you guys are all doing well. Remember next week is spring break. So yeah, you guys take a little break and rest. Um, even though I know we've had plenty of rest, it seems like, and can't get out of the house and we're all going a little stir crazy, but I hope this finds you well. And I'm going to read to you guys today, The Hippo-Nonymous. It is written uh, by Tony and Jan Payne and illustrated by Guy Parker-Reese. Here we go. All right. And... Portly was a very young hippopotamus. He didn't ask to be a hippopotamus. He was just born that way. And he wasn't sure he wanted to be one forever. Hippos stood up to their eyes in water all day. They ate boring old grass all day. What sort of life was that? Hmm, I don't know. One day, Portly said to his mom and dad, I've been a hippo for long enough, and now I want to be something else. Impossible, said his dad, shaking his head. You're a hippopotamus. And that's the way it is, said his mom. But Portly was a very stubborn hippo. We'll see about that, he said, and stomped off. It's time for me to be something more interesting and to eat stuff with some taste, he called back. I kind of agree with Portly. I don't think I'd want to eat grass all day. Portly had not gone far when he met a herd of animals. More hippos, he thought. But as soon as he got closer, he saw that he had big spikes where their noses should be. You could do a lot of, um, well, tossing stuff around with spikes like that, he thought. Does anybody know what animal this is? I know one of my zoologists in first grade. I know Miss Isabel does. Excuse me, Portly said politely to the nearest animal. What sort of creature are you? I'm a rhinoceros, said the animal through a mouthful of twigs. Well, I'm going to be a rhino thingy too, said Portly. But first, I need some spikes. Where did you get yours? The rhinoceros laughed. You could say I got my horns from my mother. Does she have any more? Asked Portly. No, said the rhino. You have to grow your own. We'll see about that, said the little hippo. Portly found two pieces of wood and sharpened them until they were pointed like horns. He tied them to his nose and then he couldn't see. He tied them to the sides of his head. He tied them on top of his head. He tied them underneath his chin. No matter what, they just didn't look right. He turned around as to ask for some advice, but the rhinos were gone. So Portly continued on his journey with the horn sticking out just anywhere. He looks kind of funny to me. Before long... Portly saw a strange animal hanging upside down from a tree. And here it is over here. That looked like fun. Excuse me, he said. What sort of creature are you? I'm a bat, I think, said the animal. And you are? I'm a hipponocerus, actually, said Portly. So what do bats do? The bat took ages to answer. Eat stuff? Hang out. It's not easy being a bat, he added. We'll see about that, said Portly. He made some hooks out of bananas and tied them to his feet. Carefully, he climbed to the tree and then hung upside down. Now what, he asked. Now, said the bat, we wait. For what? Portly wanted to know. The bat thought hard. Wednesday, he said. So Portly settled down to wait for Wednesday. But after five minutes, the banana slipped and he fell out of the tree. That's when Portly decided that five minutes was just about the right amount of time to be a bat. A little later, Portly found a water hole. Standing in it was an enormous animal. Excuse me, Portly said. What sort of creature are you? I am an elephant, said the animal. What may I ask are you? 
I'm a hippobatonoceros, and I'm going to be an elephant too, announced Portly. I want to spit water out of my nose. I want to smell something when I'm here, and my nose is somewhere else. So, I'll want to do those tube things. I want one of those tube things, and I'll want some big flappy ears, and... The elephant had to smile. Wait a second. You hippobatonoceros, you have to be born with those things. But Portly was determined. We'll see about that. Portly made big ears from two large leaves. Then he made a trunk out of a vine. But what could he do with it? He wanted to trumpet tunes and pluck leaves and spit with it. But he couldn't. His journey was slow because his horns fell over his eyes. His hooks caught in bushes. He kept tripping over his trunk and his ears flapped all over the place. But by now, Portly was getting a bit bored with all this excitement. He kept thinking about water for some reason. Hmm. Portly had gone, had not gone far when he met some new animals. They started on the ground, like you and me, but ended up above the trees. Excuse me, said Portly to the knobby knee. What sort of creature are you? A head appeared from the leaves. I'm a giraffe, it said. Well, what do giraffes do? Called the little hippo. Eat leaves mainly, said the giraffe. Can a hippo elabatinoceros eat leaves? Portly inquired. I should think a hippo elabatinoceros could eat anything, replied the giraffe. Then I'll be a giraffe, said Portly. But it takes years to grow all the way up here, exclaimed the giraffe. We'll see about that, said Portly. Portly made two tall stilts out of branches and strapped them to his legs. But it was hard being up so high. Easy. Oops. Uh-oh. Help! Portly was now as hot and hungry as a hippo could be. I know just what I need, he thought, and Portly started out on the long trail that led back to the river. What does Portly need? Let's think. What does he keep wanting back? <laughs> Portly's mom and dad were standing up to their eyes in the water when they saw their son. Excuse me, said mom, knowing who it was, but not letting on. What sort of creature are you? I'm a hippo jur elabatinoceros, Portly said proudly. Well, are you hungry, asked his mom kindly. I'm afraid we only have boring old grass for supper. Do hippo jur elabatinoceroses eat boring old grass? As a matter of fact, said Poi, they like it more than anything. Then come and join us, said Dad. So the young hippopotamus removed his stilts and slid into the river. The water felt wonderful, and the boring old grass tasted better than ever. He did not notice his ears folding away, his trunk sinking, and his hooks and horns falling off. Mom smiled at Portly. Our own little hippo doesn't want to be a hippo anymore. So there's plenty of room for you if you'd like to stay. Hmm, said Portly, looking up at some nearby monkeys and wondering what it would be like to swing from a tree to tree by his tail. We'll see about that. So... I thought this was a really cute book. I love, I love hippos. They're cute animals. So I hope you got to enjoy this little fun story about different animals. And I hope you guys are all staying safe and well. And we will see you later. Have a good one, guys. Bye.